Good evening and welcome to the X-Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City, where courageous people share their journey from the religion of Mormonism to a personal saving relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I thank God for this opportunity and I thank the volunteers who make this possible. I was a Latter-day Saint for over 60 years. I love the LDS people, but we know that there are faithful Latter-day Saints questioning and even leaving the church some because of church doctrine, some because of church history. Others just can't do enough or be good enough. Others can't keep the commandments. They don't fit in. They feel guilty. We hope that the story you hear tonight will touch your heart and give you hope in Jesus. I'd like to begin with a prayer. Father in heaven, we're grateful for this opportunity to share a story tonight. We pray your spirit will be with us. We love you. And we pray that hearts out there in those watching will be touched and their hearts will be softened. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Sure, happy to welcome Corey Malin tonight. Oh, good to be Corey, here. Corey, nice to have you here. Thank you. You were a Latter-day Saint, I guess, from birth, were you? I, or I, you, I was, yes. Were you born in the Covenant, so born, to speak? I kind of. Kind but of. We'll, yeah, we'll kind of go over my kind of later, I guess. <laughs> well, no, tell well, us my, about your story. My mom, uh, she divorced when I was three and took my older sister and I to uh, Arizona. Uh, remarried there in Mesa, and then uh, about a year later, we oh, went through sealed. the temple and got sealed. Oh. So technically, I guess. Do you remember much about that? I, <laughs> I remember, I remember mirrors going on forever, and that's about yeah. the the extent kind of my interesting thing they have. Right. In sense. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so you lived kind of a full Mormon life, did you? You were baptized at eight. And... It was baptized at eight, and uh, yes, we attended church. Yeah, every Regularly every Sunday, and, yeah. and uh, you know, of course, if, when I got older, if I didn't want to, uh, the the uh, repercussion was you know, oh, grounded until the following you didn't Sunday. Want to go to church. Yeah, right, right. So I went. So you had the enthusiasm went. for going to church. Sure, I guess. sure, I, sure you did. <laughs> forced enthusiasm. Yeah. Right. So then, you, did you take seminary and I did. scout yeah. and deacon and all that stuff? Did some scouting uh, uh, and seminary, seminary, yes, and yeah, yeah, went through the loved Wednesday nights because uh, you know was able to go and play a little hoop. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah. yeah, so I, yeah, I was involved. Well, good. Then uh, you turn eighteen, nineteen, and what happens? Well, I uh, moved out of my house at eighteen, the day after I graduated um, from high school, yeah. and uh, moved to Provo. And a lot of my roommates, uh, you know, had uh, plans to go on a mission. It was something that I really, it was a terrifying thought for me personally, if I'm being honest. Um, but I decided to go mm. um, and, uh, yeah, put in my papers and, and yeah. got my call to uh, the Philippines. Wow. And uh, went to the Philippines, served a mission from uh, 94 to, or 92 to 94 wow. in the Philippines, the San Pablo mission. Oh, and how was that experience? It it was, uh, it was not the best two years of my life. Was it? It was not. Uh, although I said that yeah. when I came when home. When you came home, sure. Uh, for at my homecoming, <laughs> um, but it was not the best two years of my life. What uh, happened? And, and I always thought um, that those who said that were just um, lying. Probably personally. saying the same thing you were right. saying. Right. <laughs> and I just yeah, I was. Expected to. It just was I. I to, I decided to go on a mission so I could learn Mormonism. I thought that would be the up, up till the point of uh, you know 18, 19 before my yeah. mission. I really didn't know much Mormon doctrine, and I thought uh, what a uh, there wouldn't be a better way than to serve a mission um, and and really dive in and and learn uh, right. about the church and and learn why it was the only. Um, Claimed to be the only yeah. true church. On Family Earth. was happy you went. I'm sure they're thrilled. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and so they're thrilled. How how did what did you feel about your teaching there in in the Philippines? Well, you know, I sp I spoke a, another language, and so most of the time was spent uh, just reading the discussions in their language, and then trying to carry right. um, you know on dialogue basic with them, conversation. basic conversation. Yeah. So it, it that to me was. Was was difficult at first, but yeah, I got to the point where I was um, as fluent as I could yeah. be within the time span that I had. Um, but when I, when I say it wasn't the, the best two years of my life, it was just I was constantly con uh, I felt conflicted um, on what I was what I was teaching. Really, um, 
And, and it, there was just always something in the back of my mind saying, do you, do you really honestly believe what you're teaching? And you're, now um, you're talking about Joseph Smith and talking, the, the Book of Mormon and the gold plates and right. that kind of stuff? Right. I, I, even though I had... I had nothing to compare Mormonism to. I still felt that, well, this is, this is all I know. Uh, there's, there's answers um, for most questions. Uh, I, this must be true. Yeah. Um, it, the church is global. I mean, you were global. probably telling your, bearing your testimony, I assume, uh, of these things, right? Right. But it, yeah. was, the, it was the typical obligatory, yeah. I know that this church is the only <laughs> true church on the face of the planet. But I, I didn't know anything. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't really know much about anything. I had the basics. And even on my mission, of course, you're, you're teaching basic surf the on the surface yeah. um, doctrine now to your you, investigators did you feel like you looking back even and maybe then did you feel like you were preaching jesus much no no but no representing but i jesus? wanted to i wanted that yeah i you know i wanted to i didn't no i didn't feel like it was representing jesus if i'm being perfectly honest i was i i, I felt a void on uh, my entire mission, up, up until toward the end of my mission, where I met um, a a, um, a couple that were there from the United States, serving a a full time mission. They were they were part of a, a Bible basketball camp, and they're they're running the camp. They're um, it was a Baptist pastor. And wow. I had about three months left to go on my mission, and he invited us to teach the discussions. And in my mind, I'm thinking, well, this is this Great. is it. I'm gonna I'm convert them. Convert the, the Baptists Baptist, yeah. and. And uh, go out, you know, with flying colors, and and quite frankly, um, not not to spend too much time on on this, but they just told me they taught me about something called the grace that I had never heard before, and they they just, they said, yeah, Corey, you're you're saved by the finished work of Jesus Christ alone. That's it. And that's where it stops. It's not Jesus plus any, plus anything else, and um, I. Uh, just the love that exuded from these people um, was the for the first time on my mission a love I, I didn't feel hadn't felt before, I hadn't no. felt on on my mission it was I knew that they had this this relationship with God and at that almost at that moment if if God's voice could have been heard it was he was saying to you. Do you, are you sure you still believe what you believe? And at that very moment, I, I was I, I basically told the God that I believed in then that hey, if you require these people uh, who I know love you, I can tell love you to go through some temple and 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 have some uh, ordinance taken care of for them through a temple to hopefully one day Get be with you in heaven, then I don't want anything to do with that because wow. the God I wanted a relationship with <laughs> was greater than that and um, I mean I could have made up you yeah. know what uh, I was preaching and and I'm, I'm pretty uh, small-minded so <laughs> but they mean, really I, had an influence they, they really did the seed. they they did yeah. they were the Fogels and um, I had a couple years ago, found them on Facebook, wow. and I sent him a message, and he said, Corey, you've been in my, my prayer box since you've left. Did he ever know what... And he, he knows he my story you? now. Oh, he does. Yes. Oh, great. Uh, he wishes me uh, two birthdays now, my yeah. physical birth and my spiritual wow. birth. And, and I, that was a born-again experience then. Huh? It, 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 it didn't really, it didn't happen then. I just started yeah. questioning things. Yeah. The, the spiritual rebirth came uh, about four years ago. Oh. Um, uh, yeah, I did. We'll, we'll get into yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, sure. So tell us about coming home. Now you finished your mission. Right. You came home. Uh, did you ever question? Uh, did you were you having questions about the church then? Then after you came home. I did. I was. I, I wanted to. Again, the reason why I went is so I could learn doctrine, and and, and I didn't learn that much stuff. Okay. I decided to investigate. You know, the, the deeper level stuff. The, the roots of Mormonism, and, and, and so I started problems. delving in, yeah. and, and I started researching. And it wasn't until after my mission that I, I heard about the, uh, hey, you can become a God teaching. I didn't know that. You hadn't heard that before, huh? I, I, my entire mission, before my mission, no. Just hadn't heard God. that. And that was really the stick that broke the, the camel's back for me. I, wow. I was like, I, what, am I, what have I been a part of my entire life that 
teaches, I can somehow become, God. become a god okay. of my own planet. Wow. And so, yeah, I, I, I did some research, and it didn't take long for me once I had an open mind to discover that, um, that uh, it just wasn't true, that it was man-made, that the doctrines weren't uh, biblical. Um, and so I almost had the kicking, I it was kicking my heels in the air reaction to it because I always doubted it. Yeah, and so once I, I discovered that it wasn't true, I was excited. Wow! Did you ever share this with anybody? Were you able to share this with family? I, I shared it with my older sister, who yeah. actually was very instrumental in in discipling me out of, uh, not necessarily out of Mormonism, just into truth, into yeah. Christianity. Uh, she sh would share, um, you know, truth with me. Wow! Uh, and the focus, the focus. With both the Fogels in, in uh, the Philippines and with my sister was, was on truth. Wow. Uh, it wasn't, um, you know, them coming at me. Why do you think things. this, uh, I guess I would say, lack of study by the Latter-day Saints is such a stumbling block to them? Why are they unwilling to look into their history more or learn about their doctrine? I, I think it's because they're, they're are they taught not to. Yeah, and they, it, it's such a good system for convincing someone just to, hey, trust me, the, the successful guy up here in a suit and talking to you, trust me, tr trust, and then go home and just, you know, live your life. But every Sunday, come back and just trust what you're hearing. Yeah. And, and don't, don't think. question things. Don't question. And, and, and they do such a good job in, in instilling that if you do question things, you are scum. How dare you? Yeah. If you yeah. ever bring up anything that's not uh, right down the line, it, uh, it raises their antennas up. And, right. Yeah. So how long did this go then? Tell us about now your born again experience. Well, I, so I, I'm kick, I, I find out it's not true and, and I'm convicted it's not true. And in my mind, I, I, I'm, I'm kicking my you know, heels up in the air, like I said. Uh, but I, I, I thought that, hey, I'm just going to join now the rest of the born again Christians and live it up, and so I did that. I, I lived it up. Oh, you're saved by grace. So. You're saved by <laughs> grace, and, she, and, and so I can just live it up, and, and, I, and I tried that, and I still believed in God. I wasn't about to throw him out. Um, the, uh, I still believed in God and still desired this relationship with him, um, but it didn't happen the way I was, I was living, and I, I still kind of had the mindset that, well, truth must be found within the, the confines of of um, the walls of an institute somewhere. So I, I started searching for, you know, started going to different churches and, and, and trying to find truth um, within that denomination. And what I was hearing was that, hey, you don't need to be a member of this church to be saved. I was hearing that the, the body of Christ, the true living church of Christ, is found within the With, person. And yeah. those people who surrender are what makes up today's true and living church of yeah. Christ. It's yeah. those people. Um, and when I, when I heard what, uh, that I didn't need membership in their institution, I needed membership, my name needed to be written on the Lamb's Book of Life uh, to be saved. It, it, it was refreshing, but I still struggled with it. And I, uh, um, for, a good number, for a good decade, wow. I struggled and searched and again lived it up. But and four years ago, uh, I finally just went to God and I said, you know what, God, I've said sinner's prayer. How you, Lord, you know how many times I've said that. And I haven't felt this change, that I, this rebirth that, that you, know you talk you about. That you, want Jesus, that you talked yeah. to Nicodemus about in, in John chapter 3. I yeah. want that. And for the first time, I went with him. I went to him empty-handed. And up till then, I was still trying to offer something, as pathetic as it may have been. I was still trying to offer, you know, my extra, my extra long prayer that I prayed the night before. I was still trying to earn his favor. I was still trying to earn grace. And for the first time, I went to him, and I think this is paramount. It's a great phrase. With empty hands. Empty hands. With empty hands. And I said, I've got nothing to offer you. It's, it's about what's been done. Wow. And what did he tell you? He, <laughs> he, he changed me. Wow. And, uh, 
and, and now I, I'm changed on two good works. It's not because of anything I've done. How, yeah. Come on, when you think you've done something, yeah. you, you lower what Jesus did for you. Every time you do something. Every time you try to earn his favor. He, I mean, come on, God says it's filthy rags to me if you think you're earning my favor. It's filthy rags, and, and I love the type of filthy rag he's referring to in Isaiah. He doesn't want your works when you think it's earning favor. He just wants you to work when you realize the finished work has been done for you. Yeah. Jesus said it is finished. Yeah, your works are in vain. Yes. Yeah. And so now I, I realized that what I didn't have before was this joy that wasn't there before. And I talked to others who experience it, and they don't experience it because we all get together and we, we uh, you know, decide, that, hey, let's, Let's talk this way. It's it's just it just happened. It's happened. Now, and and you feel do you feel the blinders come off? I absolutely. Mean, the Bible means the, something. Did well, tell us about oh, the, the Bible. The, the books, the Galatians and Ephesians and Romans and in fact Romans chapter six was one of the things that led me to that uh, surrender. Really? It, it was the beginning of Romans six. It basically says, well, since now you're we're saved by grace. Should we keep sitting so that <laughs> grace becomes even more? I was living that way, and I didn't read it and then and then it, think, oh, that's me. It was me, and then I read I read it, and it convicted me of yeah, I was that person. I was thinking that I was, you know, I'm saved by grace, but I, I, up to that point, I was not saved, even though I had a belief. That, yeah. And Jesus Christ dying for me. Well, I think the fact that you had such a trust in God all the way through this, it sounds like you were seeking Him, searching Him. You were always questioning whether you've uh, quite reached where you want to. I, I mean, being willing to be receptive to Him and His Spirit, I think that's admirable because I think a lot of people just figure that they go through it, they're doing their own works, and, sure. and they're making their own headway, and they don't need God as much. They don't go, as you say, with empty hands. Right. And I, I yeah. think that's paramount. You, yeah. you, you go empty-handed, please. <laughs> so now if you were to go on a mission, uh, or I guess better said, as an El a Latter-day Saint, we covered that as, as you didn't feel like yeah. you were representing Jesus. Now how do you feel about, the, about our Savior? <laughs> <laughs> uh, night, night and day difference. It's real. Um, and, and the change that I've experienced uh, inside, I, I can't describe as a, a burning in the bosom. Or, or it doesn't make my hair stand yeah. up on my arms. It's just a, it, it, it's a reality. It's a confidence. And it's, a, it's a reality. And, yeah. and, and now, yes, I want to, to just share truth because the truth does set you free. And it set, it set me free it, as the song yeah. says and the, the chains are gone. off your shoulders and right yeah and you feel like like you said when you do good works it's now because because you love god and love your fellow man exactly not because yeah. i think i'm earning his favor it's just I, wow. it's the least i can do with um the, the small time frame that we have to work within wow. this life and now you attend a, a christian church i do with your family you have a couple of kids and Right. And, and are they all walking with Christ, yes. as we'd say, Christian? And Absolutely. How's that experience compared to a Mormon church? It's, it, <laughs> it's just, we're, it's not a burden. And it used to be a burden to go to church. Yeah. Back when I was at, you know, attending an active LDS member, it seemed like it was work. It was a burden. Now it's just a, we're excited to yeah. go. We look forward yeah. to it. We feel the same way. We can't. Can't wait to go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can't get enough. Right. Yeah. But and, and it also it, it runs into the, the the rest of the week too, yeah. which is awesome. I mean, yeah. you, 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 That's you having Christ, Christ in you, isn't right. it? And, and and being Him. Now, are there programs for your young kids? There. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's. there's See, I think I think a lot of absolutely. Latter Day Saints don't understand that there's actually some structure out there that right. parents and families or people care about their. Uh, children and make sure programs for them. Tell us a little bit about what they do and what they experience at church. Yeah, there's, there's uh, what I guess the equivalent of primary for kids. They have their you know, individual classes that yeah. they go to for their age group. Um, and there's also programs that the, um, like Awana, that um, uh, isn't just for that, that denomination or non-denomination. You, you can send your kids there um, during the week, at 
believe it's on Wednesday. Um, our kids aren't going right now, but uh, other kids go, and it's it's a program that um, usually one church within a certain geographical range yeah. will sponsor, and and you you take your kids there, and they learn the, the Bible, and they yeah. learn um, they the have truth good and, values, right? And and awesome it's values. not eat, drink, and be merry. Right? No, no, <laughs> it's not. In fact, that's one of the that could be the biggest misconception yeah. misconception of Mormonism is that. Is that, um, and that's why I guess perhaps I, I thought once I uh, um, learned that Mormonism wasn't uh, the way that I would be one of those Christians that was described to me and just live it up. But no, no, that's not. And that's you tried not that for a all. few years, and, and it didn't work. Yeah, <laughs> right. It absolutely didn't work. Yeah. No, they're devout um, and, and very faithful, and ha they have very strong family values. Yeah, and um, there's there's many many good denominational, non-denominational churches within Utah were not uh, at odds with each other. And I used to think that... Yeah, well, I did too. I, I remember being taught that, hey, there's a lot of different churches out there yeah. because everyone's at odds, odds with, with each, each other. other. And, yeah. uh, you know, doctrinally speaking. And, and that's just not uh, just not the case. Wow. Uh, we agree on the essentials. Yeah. And that's the important thing. How are you saved? And it's through the yeah. finished work of Jesus Christ alone. <laughs> yeah. And your wife is is together with you. Was and she, she is. Was she Latter Day Saint? She was, and I've got to speak to that real quick if I could. For a good number of years, I went to church by myself. Um, I'd you know be one of those show up late and leave early. I didn't really want to talk to anybody. That's a Christian church. Christian or? churches uh -huh. that I checked out. She would stay at home or go to you know the, the local LDS. ward. Okay. Uh, so for a good four or five years, and I guess I bring this up just to for the. The, the the person the couple that's out there right now that's experiencing a divide, to hang on, don't 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 go run off and 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 uh, divorce. Trust God. Trust God. Right? Yeah. Absolutely, because I be I, patient. Be patient. Yeah. And I have no patience. <laughs> and I many times thought, oh, I'm just gonna this just gonna leave gonna her work, and find I'm... myself a good Christian woman. <laughs> wrong. That yeah. was wrong. And praise God. Yeah. He. he he was well, in control. We hope to hear her story sometime, yeah. but did she uh, eventually come uh, to see things as you yes. shared with her and so on? And yes. So and it wasn't me, actually. That no, of course I not. tried, yeah. and, and I can be overbearing, and I finally, guys, like, Corey, stay out of the way. And he used <laughs> other people. Let me do it. <laughs> he used other, he really did. He used other people, and yes, she is, she's a, a born-again uh -huh. Christian, and, um, and, and praise God yeah. at, at, for the union that we have, that we're equally yoked now. And yeah. Well, what would you tell the Latter-day Saints out there that are listening uh, t in terms of sharing your thoughts and what, what they could do? Yeah. Search and, and use your mind because you're commanded to in the Bible. Um, just... Don't don't trust things that are being said from your pulpits and and um, and look into those things that you know you're questioning um, and ultimately just take it to the sovereign God who is in control and, and you, you can't shock him you you, you can't uh, offend God with your questions and concerns and just trust him with those very questions that you have and, and just keep seeking and um, ultimately just, just trust in God. Well, I thought the one comment you made about offending, uh, you can't offend God if you have an honest heart. Right. And if people... He knows are, your heart. Yeah, and, and you obviously had opportunities. People came into your life and, and you were seeking God and you were honest and at least trusted in God that, that he would lead you and guide you. And yeah. Now looking back, do you see those, obviously, do you see those things that you've shared with us tonight right. really impacted you just little bit by little bit and, and brought you along. Now your family, are they, uh, all the kids, the brothers and sisters, are they... Willing to listen, or have no, you been no, able no, to share with them? I, I try. Yeah. I, I try, and and it gets cut off pretty quick. It's yeah. just my older sister and I that uh, are are Christians, yeah. and born again Christians. Um, I, I try starting the the dialogue as best I can with. But they just don't want to hear. Right. Yeah. But at, in with what I do with work, um, 
I've had m many, many opportunities to share. Yeah. And God and I seem that we have this agreement that I'm just, I, I will be prepared with the answer, and He sends <laughs> those with questions, and it's working. Yeah, it is working. And hopefully, somebody will come into your family and, I hope and so. do the same thing. I hope so. And that's what we hope for. That's my we prayer. pray for somebody to to touch somebody else's heart because we've. You know, we've made an effort. We've tried to share, and and some people are yeah. willing to listen. I, of course, I I felt like my wife was uh, unique in that she was willing to look yeah. and and study and and realize what I'd found about the church, and and was able to uh, to come. And yeah. now she has a great relationship with Christ as well. Yeah. So oh, that's, that's, that's a blessing, awesome. isn't it? Yes, have, it is. Have your wife. Well, we appreciate you coming, uh, Corey. You've got a great story and. Uh, well, thank appreciate you. Appreciate you sharing. I'm sure you've touched some, some lives out there, and I appreciate your sharing. Uh, you know, um, we, if you have a story yourself, if you've been Latter Day Saint, or if you uh, know someone that would might be interested in sharing their story, uh, here on the X Files, we'd love to have them. Uh, if they'd go to xmormonfiles.tv. Um, I know that the Latter-day Saints, and Corey, you'd probably agree with this, they feel like they're going to give up their eternal salvation, don't they? Sure. Their celestial that, that, there's life. There's that fear there. Yeah. But it's it's not true. No, and <laughs> it's, I think, that concept of heaven and hell. Right. Uh, because Joseph Smith gave us this concept, or gave them the concept of celestial, terrestrial, and celestial. Right. And instead, there's actually just heaven and hell. So all these scriptures about everlasting life, and if you believe on me, you'll have eternal life, and you'll be saved. Those are all relating to heaven. Right. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. And, yeah, and that gives us hope that we know where we're going after this life, doesn't it? It we sure does. Scripture is yeah. emphatic with you can know, and yeah. you don't have to hope. And you're not you going know. to be judged by these vain works that we try to do, as right. you shared before. Right. So uh, anyway, it's a, a, a great thing. And, you know, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall Amen. see God. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And this is the work of God. This is in John 6, 29. This is the work of God that ye believe on him who he hath sent. That's all that's required that is, is to believe on him. And I didn't truly believe or understand these verses as a Latter-day Saint. Right. And I have to say, I agree with you uh, on my mission. I didn't preach Jesus. I was a representative of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, right. the organization. Yeah, exactly. And uh, so I'm, I'm so grateful that God's opened my eyes and, as he has yours. And I hope that you uh, in the audience will pay attention and, and uh, be willing to at least look, study, turn it over to God. Ask him if what we're saying is true. Prove us wrong actually, and good night.